Welcome to another tutorial for the Unreal Engine. This one is going to focus on Blueprint interfaces. If you use Blueprints in Unreal, you're really going to want to know about interfaces, how to use them, and how performant and awesome they are. Let's take a look at an example of what we're going to be doing in the editor. Here is a small example I put together of the first person template. Uh, basically, when I hit the space bar, we're going to send out a raycast, and anything that we hit, we're going to send an interface call to, um, and that object is going to interpret the interface call in their own way. So as I hit this box to the left here, thing one, it's going to add an impulse up into the air, and this other one is just going to scale up and down really quickly. And I will show you how that's done um, in our own project. So let's start with a new project. We're going to launch the Unreal Engine. I'm using 4.25.0, but you can use any version back to 4.09, I believe. So we're going to start a new game project from the first person template. Um, leave all this the same. I'm not going to change the name for this example. Create project. Now when this project loads up, we are going to create a blueprint interface that we're going to use to communicate between blueprint classes. First thing I'm going to do is go down to the Blueprints folder, right click in a blank area, Blueprints, create a Blueprint interface. My interface. Once that's created, go ahead and double click on it to open it up. <clears throat> and what you'll see here is a grayed out window that says Read Only. The interface exists only of function names, no implementation. And um, they've already got one laid out for you here, but we're actually going to rename this just to interact. We're going to create a function called interact and put it on our blueprint class, and then our blueprint will be able to interact in whichever way it wants to. So in order to send this command out, I'm going to go to the first person character class, and I'm actually going to hijack this jumping input here just for ease of demonstration so I don't have to create a whole bunch of... Um, inputs for us to call. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a line trace. A line trace is just a raycast. It's a line trace by channel. So whenever I hit the jump action, we are going to do a line trace out into the world, um, starting with the sphere at the end of the gun. We'll take a look at this in just a minute. So we're going to get the uh, world location. Get world location. And this is going to be the start point for our trace. What we're also going to do is uh, get the forward vector, which is a normalized vector where its magnitude is equal to 1. Um, in the forward direction, if we take a look here, mouse over, it says get the forward unit direction vector from this component, in this case x. Um, we're going to take a look at the sphere here in the viewport, and we're going to see that the sphere uh, actually has the x direction pointing out of the gun and that's the one we're interested in so forward direction we're since it's normalized that's only a uh, one centimeter in magnitude we're going to multiply this by a float so that we're going a thousand centimeters out we're going to add this to our start location so that we go from our start um, plus a thousand centimeters out in the forward direction and that's going to be our end trace. Let's change the debug type to duration so we can see our hit when it happens. And then here on our out hit we are going to break these results and we're just interested in getting the actor. Okay, once we have the actor um, we are going to call the interact um, interface message. Now the message is something that is sent out uh, to a target. In this case, we're going to take the actor that we hit and just send the interact interface call. Now a lot of people will do a branch out here to say, have we hit anything, yes or no. If we have, then go ahead and send the call. But honestly, it's just faster to do this way, um, more performant. If there's nothing on the receiving end, the interface call will just be dropped and it's no big deal. So compile and save. Um, so we're gonna test that out. If I hit the space bar, which normally is jump, we see this line trace going out into the world and it's hitting stuff. Now it's a little off to the left because the sphere is rotated um, in the example. 
a little bit to the left. So we'll just have to deal with that. All right, so we have our interface class. We have a first person character class that actually uses that interface to send out a call. Now what we're gonna do is create a blueprint class, an actor class. We're just gonna call it BP underscore thing one. And then go ahead and go into that. In order to attach the interface we just created to our new blueprint, let's go to class settings. Under the details panel, look for interfaces. You'll notice no interfaces are implemented at this time, not inherited uh, or otherwise. Let's click on add. Let's look for my interface class here, or just my interface. Once that's attached, um, you'll see a new column over here on the left that shows um, all of the functions inside of your interface. If you right click and say implement function, you'll uh, have a new function created for you or an event rather in this case. And what we can do is hook up anything we want to here and then that functionality will be executed when the interface is called. So what I'm gonna do is just add a static mesh component, give us something to look at and make it the root. We're gonna just make it a regular cube, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna click on simulate physics here and then we're gonna drag out our static mesh and then we're gonna just say, add, if I can type here, add impulse. Uh, make sure it's a character, uh, sorry, a physics add impulse here. Connect that up. What we're gonna do is just add a velocity change of 600 in the Z direction. If we compile and save that, we'll go back to our level. We will place one of our things into the level. Move it up a little bit so you can see it. And if we hit play, you'll see our ray casting is working. And then if we hit on the cube here, uh, you'll notice that we hit it. And when we do, uh, the interface class is called and it pops it up into the air. Now to show you the flexibility of this a little bit more, we're gonna duplicate thing one, create thing two. And here we're just gonna remove the impulse and do something entirely different. We're gonna add a little bit of an animation. So what I'm gonna do is uh, make a timeline, a new timeline. We're just gonna go in and create a new float key. Just add three keys right off the bat. This is the way I like to do it. Um, the first key being uh, at time zero, a value of one. We're gonna be manipulating scale here, so we want one to be our baseline. At time point two, we're gonna want the scale to go up to two. And finally, at time point four, we're gonna want it to go back down again to one. So essentially, we are <clears throat> going from one to two to one again. And we want this to be our scale, name it for convenience. So now uh, when the interact event starts, we're gonna play from start and we're gonna get our static mesh. We're going to um, set the relative scale, 3D. We're gonna split this struct here and plug our new scale into X, Y, and Z. And then plug that into the update, compile and save. Now that we have thing two, we're gonna drag this out next to thing one, hit play. Now when we do space bar, you'll, you'll notice that the ray trace is off to the left. This is just, uh, just the way it is if you don't correct the rotation of the spheres. But when we hit this box on the right, thing one, it hops. When we hit the box on the left, thing two, it does a scale according to the timeline that we just made. Now this is a very basics in interface functionality. When an interface call is sent off to another blueprint, it doesn't have to get a reference. It doesn't have to do any type of casting. It doesn't have to do anything. It just sends the call. If that blueprint can implement the function, then it does it in its own way, as you've seen here with thing one and thing two. And this is a really effective way for just using blueprint in your project to provide a base level of functionality across many blueprint classes. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.